So we also have something called as a bronchodilator testing. So this is used for a diagnosis of asthma. So we have to look at a reversible airway obstruction. So basically, suppose if a patient is having, when you do the spirometer, you see that there's an obstructive sort of a disease. You, you give them a bronchodilator uh, challenge and you look for the response. And once uh, with that, if their uh, response is improving, according to the this thing, uh, according to the, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, in the range, then it means that there is a uh, asthma. So basically asthma, we look for a reversible uh, airway obstruction. So uh, this is what we do. We, we administer a bronchodilator like salbutamol, either as an epilization or you can do it as a puff. And you look for a positive response in the adults, which is defined as a 12% increase in the baseline of FEV1 uh, or more following the administration of a bronchodilator. So this is what a curve also looks like. So uh, just one example of a spirometer curve. Uh, maybe we can just uh, see what do you think is the diagnosis here? What kind of a disease is it? And what, what is the, what kind of a spirometer reading is this? And why do you say so? Okay, somebody says it's restrictive. Why do you say it's restrictive? Obstructive. Because FEV1 is normal, okay. So FEV1 is 71% of predicted. And FEC is 66% of predicted. FEV1 by FEC is 82.5. Okay, so that is more than 70. And FEC, we see, is more reduced than FEV1. Okay, so I think we're getting good answers. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, it means that I think people have paid attention. So it is a restrictive disease. Um, so it, that's very much right. So basically, all the pointers that we mentioned, right? So uh, FVC is reduced more than FEV1. And if the ratio will be more than 70%. And even when you look at the curve, uh, you're able to make out that it's a restrictive pathology. So this is another spirometer reading. So can I have the diagnosis for this? And why? So this is basically a pre-bronchodilator spirograph. So here we are seeing that um, FVC is 72% of predicted. FEV1 is 86% uh, of predicted. Okay. Somebody says it's obstructive. And FEV1 by FVC, if you see, it's very low. Okay, so it's probably an obstructive disease. So probably you would say that the diagnosis is obstructive. But then what happens? Yeah, uh, so post bronchodilation, we are seeing that there is a improvement. So there's a 29% improvement in FVC and a 34% improvement in FEV1. We have to see a minimum of 12% improvement. So now what do you think the diagnosis is? Now that there's a post bronchodilator response. It's not restrictive. It is still obstructive uh, because uh, it doesn't change because of a bronchodilator response. So the curve is definitely obstructive. But after the bronchodilator response, we are able to make a more uh, specific diagnosis and uh, you know come to the diagnosis of asthma because there's a reversible bronchial uh, uh, you know airway obstruction here. So this is why it's very important for us to be able to. Uh, do a bronchodilator response as well okay all right so this was about spirometer maybe we'll just go ahead with the peak flow meter as well i don't know how much time okay so how many of y'all have used a peak flow meter in your daily practice can i see hands or maybe if you can just put it up in the chat box anybody who's used them peak flow meter in your opds Okay. We have one person, Khawad Ali has used. That's good. Anybody else?
Okay, so I don't think a lot of people have used peak flow meters, but I would like to reiterate that it is a very useful, uh, uh, you know, device to have. It's like a blood pressure. We are, you know, we use a sphygmomanometer to look at the blood pressure and to assess the cardiac health of a person. Similarly, if you want to assess the lung health of a person sitting in your OPDs, the easiest way to do it is a peak flow meter. It doesn't require electricity, it doesn't require blood, it doesn't take a lot of time. You can carry it with you when you go out for your community postings or when you go out into the community, go, go for a home visit um, and things like that. It's very useful when we have a peak flow meter. So let's uh, try and learn what this is and how we can use it. So this is what a peak flow meter looks like. It's a very easy uh, device. It costs in India, it costs around 250 to 300 rupees or, you know, that's it. So it's a very cheap uh, device as well. And patients can have it at their own homes also. So basically, uh, this is used for the ob objective assessment and monitoring of the airway function of a patient with bronchial asthma. So this is mostly used in a patient with bronchial asthma so that they can monitor their progress, their treatment and everything at home itself. So what happens is here, this measures how fast a patient can blow air out of his lungs during a forceful exhalation after he does a maximum inspiration. So basically, it's very similar to the way you do a spirometer test. It's very similar to, to that same way you have to do the peak flow meter test as well. Um, and you measure the peak expiratory flow rate. That is what it's done. So normal rates will change depending on the age of the patient, the height of the patient, the gender of the patient and everything. And the patient's normal score should be within 20% of his particular, uh, you know, um, age range or height range or whatever it is of a person who does not have asthma. And this is used to assess the medication control as well to decide whether to change medication, add medication, reduce medication, all those kind of things. So basically, when you look at a peak flow meter, there will be three zones. There will be a red zone, yellow zone and the green zone. So, uh, you know, uh, depending on the zone, we will have to decide on the, the uh, what it is. So a normal peak flow or the personal best is the highest consistent peak flow reading over a two to three week period when the patient is not having asthma symptoms. So basically, when you give the patient a peak flow meter, you have to tell them to measure their reading when they are at their best. Uh, even an asthma patient has normal days, right? When they don't have any symptoms. So at that kind of a time, they have to measure their readings and that will be their personal best. So any other readings that they measure subsequently will be compared with their personal best and that will be the standard against which all the other future readings will be measured. So there are various uses of peak flow meter. One is it is used for the diagnosis of asthma. So uh, uh, firstly, if the if suppose you know you ask the patient to do a peak flow reading, if there is a variation of fifteen percent in the readings that the patient takes in the morning and in the evening, there is a variable airflow obstruction happening in asthma. Secondly, if there's a bronchodilator response, you make them do the peak flow, you give them a puff, aslin puff, make them repeat the peak flow. Suppose if there's a 15% increase, then it is diagnostic of asthma. Or the patient exercises for six to eight minutes and then the PFR falls by more than 15%, that also is diagnostic of asthma. So we can use this in our OPDs to you know, diagnose asthma right where we are. The second thing is to monitor disease progress, which is a very common use of peak flow. So every patient who has asthma, we have to uh, encourage them and educate them to have a peak flow meter, just like how you tell all your diabetic patients to have a, uh, a you know a glucometer at home, right? You tell all your hypertension patients to have a BP apparatus at home. So similarly, every patient with asthma needs to have a peak flow meter at home and needs to know how to use it because that is what will help them monitor their disease progress and response to treatment. The other thing is for a self-management as well. A lot of people who don't have access to medical, medical care, let's say they're staying in a remote place, they can actually self-manage if they're taught well. Based on the zones, it's very easy. Green zone, orange zone, red zone. So, you know, they have to measure every day in the morning and evening uh, as a routine before they take medications, whether they have asthma symptoms or not. They have to measure in between if at all they have any symptoms of asthma or if at all they need an extra puff. At that time, they have to measure their readings. During an attack, they have to measure. Once they take the medication, they have to measure. So all of these things they can do. And that helps them in a self-management as well. That will help them to decide when they need to take a rescue dose also. So this is what uh, how we do a peak flow measurement. So, um, you know, you have to just place the peak flow at the lowest number. Stand up, inhale deeply, hold it in your mouth, 
and uh, seal it tightly. There should not be any uh, leakage of air around the mouth uh, when you're blowing it and blow out as hard as possible. Wherever the pointer goes and stops, write down that number and then you'd repeat the same test twice. So it's a very simple test. You don't have to know anything else. It's just a very simple test that anybody can use it in their homes. So, uh, and they can, they, you, you get these graphs, which you can even download from the internet and you can get it in booklet formats as well. Usually when they give you a peak flow meter, they also give you a booklet for monitoring along with that. So this is what it uh, sort of looks like. So you can, uh, you know, people can actually just mark it in the graph and that also sort of helps in measuring the peak flow. So, uh, so basically, this is how it helps us to decide. So asthma care plan, let's say that a patient, when he measures his reading, it is in the green zone, comes to green. He's all right. He's fine. He's doing well. So it's a good day for him. His peak flow is between 80 to 100 percent. He can have a normal day. Suppose it comes to the yellow zone. He's having some cough. He's wheezing. Uh, he's having some nighttime awakening and everything. Suppose you can wait. If you, if you remain in that zone for more than 24 hours, that is the time for you to reach out to your doctor. Suppose you're in the red zone, the, the reading is in the red zone, the patient is having difficulty in breathing, not able to respond to relief medication, then that is the time, it's like a red flag sign where the patient have to reach out to the doctor, go to the hospital immediately. So this is how it helps. So we also have a stepwise approach to managing asthma. I am not going to discuss this slide because I don't think this is in the purview of today's discussion. But I just want you all to have a look at this slide. Maybe if needed, we can have a detailed discussion on management of asthma uh, at a later, uh, later date as well. But uh, it is depending on this that we step up or step down the ladder for asthma medications based on the peak flow readings.